All right, story time. I've got a really cool story that I told on the Destiny Community Podcast about how one of you guys out there made uh, a dream come true or something that I thought I would never find again. So um, let's set the calendar back to the mid-2000s to late-2000s. And I was a serious guitar collector. I've been a musician my whole life, played in tons of bands, written hundreds of songs. And uh, back in the mid-2000s to late-2000s, all I did was buy and sell guitars. Not as, not as a business. Um, I mean, I'd make a profit here and there, but more or less because when you're a guitar-holic, you have what's called GAS, Gear Acquisition Syndrome. And uh, you buy a bunch of guitars, and then you see something cooler, or something cooler comes out, and then sell those, and you buy some more. So I mainly collected ESP guitars, uh, but more importantly, James Hetfield and Kirk Hammett of Metallica, their signature guitars. And when they release those, they usually release them in just limited runs of like 100, 200, 50, whatever. So uh, long story short, um, I didn't play, I have not played guitar in about like five years because of YouTube consuming my life, and then also the fact that I lived in a situation where I had... Lots of neighbors who would go crazy if I played my half stack that I have in the living room here. So now I live in a place now where I could crank that thing, no, not to 11. I can only crank it to about 3 because if you know diesel VH4s, those things are extremely loud. So anyway, so I'm back into guitar collecting. And I've been looking for this one particular guitar for a very long time, or at least uh, for the last like number of years. Um, I had it back in the 2000s. I had a couple of them, actually. My first one of this guitar I had in 1999. It was my first ESP guitar, the ESP James Hetfield JH2. OK, so fast forward. So as I got back into guitar playing recently, uh, about like two months ago, I get a message on the ESP guitar message board, because I start frequenting, uh, frequenting all the different message boards that I used to go to all the time. Rigtalk.com, the ESP guitar message board.com. I get a message from someone, he's like, uh, from Denmark, I think, or Norway, I forget, somewhere in Europe. And he's like, is your name Sean? And he's got my last name. So I'm like, how does he know my last name? He's like, well, I have an ESP LTD Grinch James Hetfield guitar that has the original receipt from 2003 with your name on it. And I remember, I was like, wow, uh, that came from 48th Street Custom Guitars. I was living in Manhattan, and I remember that was coming out. They made, I think, 200 or more of them, like roughly about 200 of these Grinches. It was called the Grinch. It was a baritone guitar. Yeah, yeah. I would tune that thing down to A. And um, so I remember I bought three of them, kept one for myself, sold two of them. So he had it. We just started, you know, just kind of chatting back and forth. And I told him, I was like, I'm on the lookout for a, um, or I'm on the hunt for a ESP JH2. So then he messages me and he's like, there's an auction on eBay Germany for a dead mint ESP JH2. And I'm talking mint. I mean, this thing's been in storage for like, I don't know, like 10 or 15 years or something like that. So I'm looking at all the pictures and this guy's got the certificate of authenticity signed by Hetfield, James Hetfield himself, not even his autograph, full signature. Normally he just signs his COAs with JH and the date. Now this is like James Hetfield on it and it says like 1998 and it has the original hang tags from 1999. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I got to get this guitar, right? So I, I messaged the guy, speaks English, no problem, but he will not ship outside of Germany and he's located in Hamburg, Germany. So I tweet out, I'm like, do I have any followers or subscribers that are in Hamburg, Germany? And this nice gentleman named Jan responds to me. I pronounced his name Jan, because uh, in German they spell J-A-N, and I pronounced it wrong. Us dumb Yankees or dumb Americans. So um, I messaged him, and we started DMing back and forth. Really, really nice guy, friendly guy, family man. He's got children, wife, kids, everything. And uh, long story short, this guy went through hell in a handbasket is that the right term? Helen Highwater? Whatever. Uh, to get me this guitar. First, I tried PayPaling him the money. And this, we're talking, I mean, the guy was selling it at a great price. And I got it for a good price. But still, big chunk of money. So I ended up uh, first trying to PayPal him the money. And then it locked his PayPal account out. It was charging him fees, me fees. And then he had to refund the money back. And then I bank wired him the money. And then he got the money. And then uh, to get it shipped and find a packing place in Germany that would pack, you know, because he knows nothing about guitars. So he had to find a guitar shop that would give him a box to bring it to a packing place. Then I'm messaging with the seller so that uh, Yen was going to get the money that I wired him. Now, granted, I'm trusting Yen here with all this money to go hand this cash to the guy selling the guitar. And then, um, then make sure the guitar is packed inside the case properly. And... 
you gotta be careful with guitars, especially electric guitars, because the necks could snap in transit, you know? You gotta loosen the strings so there's no tension on it. Where the neck and the um, body meet, you gotta make sure there's bubble around there, wrap everything, because any, like, weather cause, um, can cause, like, the neck to warp, snap everything, snap city. So, um, long story short, Yan, I love you, dude. He facilitated getting me this guitar uh, by me wiring him the money. He paid the guy, went through hell and high water um, to get this thing packed, and then we kept having to go back and forth because he needed more money because the, the shipping costs and then customs fees for him and then customs fees for me. It was a nightmare. And Yan, I love you. Thank you so much for this, man. But without further ado, let me show you guys this. And you probably can appreciate this even if you're not into guitars. And if you want me to make more guitar videos, if you're into it, I was kind of thinking of making it like a weekly thing. No no Destiny 2 content or gaming content will be interrupted. But I was thinking of doing more vlog type content. Um, I want to do a full like studio tour of my whole recording setup here. And also all my guitars and all that sort of stuff. So, all right, let's go look at this ES uh, Dead Mint Condition ESP JH2 from 1999 that's been in storage for... I think roughly about 15 years. This thing, when I got it, it's like opening up a time capsule. Let's go see it. So here's the hard shell case, which is in a really, really good condition, but more importantly, this thing is in dead mint condition. Like I said, it's been in storage for a long time and there's not a single scratch I can find on this thing. It's like literally like it came off the showroom floor in 1998 or 1999. So this is the ESP James Hetfield JH2. Now they made a JH1, a JH3, I had them all at one point, but this one has always been my favorite because I love playing ESP Explorers. That's my favorite body shape. I love the way it feels when you uh, stand, when you sit down with it. It just, it feels good and I love heavy guitars and this thing just has a big old chunk of mahogany. So let's talk about the specs. So we have a uh, mahogany body, we have a uh, maple neck and a rosewood fretboard. Now that's my favorite combination of woods to go along with the EMG pickups. We have a set of EMG uh, pickups that are EMG 60 and EMG 81. In fact, in my other ESP Explorers that I have, you can see them right there. I have two custom ones that I had made back in, let's see, 2007, 2008, that were made also to the same specs as this thing here, except those are set necks. This one has a bolt-on neck, which is kind of silly because Explorers are not meant to have bolt-on necks, but back when they were making these in the 90s, for some reason, the USA market Explorers all had bolt-on necks. But regardless, this thing sounds incredible. Pretty much on par, exactly like my custom shop, ESP MX250. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Those are ESP MX2 uh, CTMs. This one's an old 2003 MX250. All right, enough of that. So we have a piece of mahogany. We've got a uh, EMG 1681. We've got this diamond plate here, which just looks amazing. And uh, I don't know if it adds to the sound or not, but this thing has an amazing clean tone on it. Uh, that's one of the things I've noticed with all of Hetfield's guitars, the JH1, 2, 3, his Iron Crosses. They always have amazing clean tones. So when you play songs like One or Fade to Black or Sanitarium, yeah, they just, like, you get that real Hetfield chime. Uh, we've got uh, diamond inlays on the rosewood. And we've got a Metallica ninja star at the first fret um whoever owned this before i don't know they took a picture of james with one of his chrome jh2s and uh james he used to play the black one a few times or well, numerous times i'm sorry but he also had a chrome one and actually um he had two of these uh and one of them he retired and it's in a museum in manhattan actually um it's over like people have pictures of it on instagram Anyway, uh, here's the Certificate of Authenticity that's signed by Mr. Hetfield himself in 1998, and there's the serial number. Now, what's weird is they, they made 200 of these guitars, and then they made a number of extras, and we don't know exactly how many extras, but the extras got a different serial number, so I, I could care less uh, that if it's between 1 and 200, all I care about is how mint this thing is, and it even has the hang tags from when it came off the floor of whatever store this is bought at. Yeah, you can see right there, March 24th, uh, 1999. Well, actually, date was July 9th, 1999. It's got the serial number on it. And one thing that's really interesting is that this thing is so heavy. I absolutely love it. Oh, I love heavy guitars. Uh, and did I mention it's got Spurzel locking tuners on the back? Yeah. And hold on, it's got the ESP custom guitars. On the back, you can see right there, because this is, well, this thing's heavy. It is made by the custom shop. So, um, 
don't get me wrong, I don't let this thing sit in its case. Um, I play this thing pretty much every single day. I've got it set up to uh, E flat with Ernie Ball uh, 11s on it. That's what I use for E flat. So uh, most of my songs that I play and write are in E flat, uh, D standard, open C, or drop C. But then I've got my other custom guitars. Might as well show you one right now. Here's one of the two custom shop ones I had built for me to my specs which is uh, the same as the GH2 except it's set neck where we've got a mahogany body and I believe that's a uh, I think it's a Honduran mahogany I think I put that racing stripe on myself this these these have all seen countless shows I mean I, I played so many gigs with them and they're all beaten up they've got dings and battle wounds on them but same setup I, I believe it's Honduran mahogany uh, rosewood fretboard Spurs of locking tuners uh, but this one has the old 90s style bell-shaped truss rod cover. Uh, I was able to get them to actually do that. They stopped doing those bell-shaped truss rod covers, I think, in the mid-90s or maybe early 90s, I think. And then they started doing like a bullet-shaped one. So on my two, I've got a black one and I've got a, uh, a white one. And then I found an old 2003 MX250 that actually had the bell-shaped truss rod cover on it. So... I just had to buy it, and this thing also just beat the heck. Uh, there I've got an ESP Truckster, and this thing's amazing. I love this guitar. It's got the James Hetfield uh, signature pickups, the headset, which is a combination of passive and also active. And what's weird about it is that it's a, uh, let me just put it on the floor over here. It's a, it looks like a small light guitar, but that thing is so freaking heavy. It's really heavy, and I love it, and it sounds great. And, um, oh, th there's my awful toes. Um, and I know that people say, is this supposed to be a distressed guitar? No, people need to understand. The trucks are supposed to be out of the car world. James Hetfield, like, talked about this. Where, um, it's like from rat rods and things like that. Where, like, when one guy owned it, it was gray. And then someone else owned it, it was white. And then it was red. And then it was black. And the last thing the guy can afford is the paint. But the paint has history on it. So, they put all kind of marks here and, um, James, he doesn't like to use his switches up here. He always uh, takes one of the four knobs out and puts the switch down here. So that's why they do that. But they distressed it on like the back where it's got a whole bunch of battle wounds. And even these uh, cracks here are actually made by ESP. So I don't know. I can't tell if this is a signature series guitar or if it's a custom shop because it doesn't play or sound like a standard series guitar. It feels custom shop. And I've, I've had all of them at one point so anyway a little brief tour here but let me know if you want to make more guitar videos but i plan on doing like a full vlog of my entire um office here setup you can see it's where i jam late at night if i don't want to play my amp and disturb my neighbors um macbook pro where i record on there's my pc and um you know yeah okay start laughing at my wire management down there that's my imac back there where i stream from but uh, I meant to do a full PC video going over um, the entire spec. So let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a full tour and uh, go over the specs of my PC and everything like that. Or some more guitar videos. And um, I definitely want to do a video on my Gibson custom shop that I just bought. Uh, that's aged, meaning that like you buy it, it's, it's a brand new Gibson Les Paul. But it's beat the heck. Or they put like lines in it as if you... Um, like the guitar is literally from 1960. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Leave me a good old hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end. And uh, do me a favor. Drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream. You usually know it's on YouTube. And that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir.